As we've discussed in our two videos on friendly fire incidents in World War II, they were far more common than you might think. Many friendly fire incidents take place during a battle, as in when an enemy is present, but not all of them. In this video, we're going to discuss one of Germany's most devastating, most embarrassing friendly fire incidents in which the Kriegsmarine and Luftwaffe tried each other on for size in the North Sea. We are, of course, referring to the terribly one-sided turd storm codenamed Operation Vikinger. The Battle of the Atlantic was the longest campaign of the Second World War, and the North Sea, situated between Britain and Germany, was a fairly hot area, figuratively speaking. In the early months of the war, roughly from September 1939 to May 1940, the Germans weren't all that keen to fight face to face against the combined might of the British Royal Navy and French Navy. With warships, U-boats, and planes, they focused on sinking Allied merchant ships and laying offensive and defensive minefields instead. German destroyers, capable of carrying up to 60 mines each, pulled a sneaky in British waters, sowing their shipping lanes with as many mines as they could. Looking out for U-boats and planes, the British largely failed to catch the German destroyers in the act. Between October 1939 and February 1940, Mines laid by German destroyers put 76 Allied ships below the waves. Back in German waters, all manner of German sea vessels deposited mines off the German coast in the North Sea, anticipating enemy activity a little closer to home. By the sounds of it, you might think the Germans had everything relatively under control. You would be wrong. The Kriegsmarine and Luftwaffe were having some straight up lethal inter- and intra-service intimacy issues. Really, the problem stemmed from the fact that the Kriegsmarine didn't have its own aviation force, as was pretty much standard practice if you actually wanted to win World War II. Germany wouldn't get that until 1950, just a little too late for Hitler, in the form of the Marineflieger. During the war, the Kriegsmarine had to pretty much beg the Luftwaffe for air support, to which the Luftwaffe might have just said, nah, we busy. This added a whole bunch of extra hoop jumping and stress to the equation. It also created additional opportunities for miscommunication. And that was at least one factor that contributed to the military facepalm that was Operation Vikinger. In February 1940, both the Kriegsmarine and Luftwaffe were looking to make some plays. After learning that some fishing boats, some trawlers and possibly even some submarines were operating to the west of their defensive minefields, the Kriegsmarine wanted to go and check it out. On the night of the 22nd, the moon bright and hardly a cloud in sight, the first destroyer flotilla went out to do just that. This was Operation Vikinger. At the same time, the Luftwaffe's 10th Air Corps, or ex Flieger Corps, which specialized in coastal operations, was planning to light up some merchant ships off the British coast with two squadrons of Heinkel HE-111 medium bombers. They were going to do it in the morning, but the weather wasn't all that great, so they waited until it cleared up that evening. One point to the 10th Air Corps, they sent Marina Gruppe West, or Kriegsmarine HQ, a message at about lunchtime, informing them about their intentions later that day. One point away from Kriegsmarine HQ, they decided to contact the flotilla, but instead of sharing this information, told them a little bit about the weather and some downed British bomber, and that's it nothing about the squadron's flight plans. Kriegsmarine HQ also contacted Luftwaffe HQ to cover the flotilla as it left German waters, and as you might have guessed, this message wasn't passed on to the 10th Air Corps either. The flotilla struck out into the cold waters of the North Sea without any air support, and things went south from there. Again, figuratively. At around 7 at night, some sailors on the leading destroyer, Friedrich Eckholt, heard the sound of plane engines and looked up to see a single aircraft soaring at low altitude through the moonlight. It flew over the flotilla without anyone below being able to identify it. 
Then it flew back over once more and disappeared, struggling in turn to identify the flotilla. Of course, we know they were both German. When the bomber came back, the flotilla opened up with their anti-aircraft guns, despite the fact that the crew of one of the destroyer were fairly certain they saw a German cross on the bomber's wing. Every shot missed, and the bomber answered with a spit of machine gun fire. With that, you best believe it was on. The bomber climbed and got ready to dump its load on the flotilla. Anti-aircraft rounds soared to the moon and a pair of misplaced bombs blew columns of salt water into the air. A third bomb struck the destroyer Lebert Mars, which freaked the hell out, signaling over and over that it was wounded and in need of assistance. It wasn't long after that the bomber came back and let loose another four bombs. At least one of these 50 kilogram explosives hit Port Lebert Mars, from which a massive fireball erupted, putting the moon to shame. That unmade the destroyer. It broke in half, exposing 330 crewmen to freezing cold water. The bomber flew away after that, probably pretty stoked with itself, but that didn't mean the battle was over for the flotilla. In their confusion, they now set about destroying themselves. Someone threw the word submarine into the mix and everybody flipped their scripts. The destroyer, Theodor Riedel, believing it was attacking an enemy submarine, dropped four depth charges on top of, well, nothing. The resulting explosion jammed the destroyer's rudder and it started going around and around in circles. Surrounded, apparently, by enemy subs, the flotilla stopped trying to rescue the freezing, drowning crew of the sinking Lebert Mars and went out on the hunt. At some point during that mess, the destroyer Max Schutz stopped answering radio transmissions. In its confusion, it was destroyed, very likely having run into some friendly mines. All 308 crewmen of the Max Schulz lost their lives. Now, the remaining four destroyers just wanted to get the hell out of there. Theodor Riedel switched to manual and stopped going in circles, and everyone booked it, having saved just 60 crewmen of the Lebert Mars. The other 270 froze and drowned, bringing the total dead to 578, in comparison to British losses of just zero. What blows is that earlier that evening, the 10th Air Corps actually called Kriegsmarine HQ to ask if any friendly naval forces were going to be operating in the same area that the 10th intended to that night. Kriegsmarine HQ was like, yeah bro, but the bombers were already on the runway and for some reason were never given this information. On the other side of the coin, Kriegsmarine HQ didn't bother to tell their flotilla about any of this either. What a mess. While a lot of pain could certainly have been avoided if the Kriegsmarine and Luftwaffe had had better inter-service communication, or if the Kriegsmarine had had its own bloody aviation force, it seems to us that the stuff-ups of Operation Vikinger were largely intra-service stuff-ups. Both services HQs seemed simply to have failed to deliver absolutely vital information to their active forces, namely the 1st Destroyer Flotilla and the 10th Air Corps, with the flotilla paying the price. In the end, the only winners here were the Allies, who, if the flotilla did indeed run into German-laid mines, didn't even have to lift a finger. It is possible, however, that the mines Max Schultz ran into were British. As always though, we're interested to know what you think. Had you heard of Operation Vikinger before this video? Why do you think the operation turned out to be such an epic disaster? And lastly, how different do you think the war might have been if the Kriegsmarine didn't have to rely on the Luftwaffe for air support? Please share all your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.